Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Ooh, nice. I've got a spicy one here, Moldrotha. Don't often want to start out with a multicolor card, but Moldrotha I'll happily uh, try and build around. So that's a nice one. Of course, Elfheim Druid would be amazing as a nice ramp creature and lots of great kicker synergies too with this. I've got Untamed Kavu, which is also excellent. But uh, yeah, let's take this Moldrotha and try and kind of build around it. I think more often than not, you're going to be base black-green with your Moldrotha decks and then kind of splash blue, just because most of the mana fixing is in green. And um, if you want to play three colors, you will need a little bit of mana fixing at least. And black-green is a color combination that often goes well together. But you never know. If we open some great blue cards, we could be base blue as well. Second pick. Um, the Mending of Dominaria is interesting. It's a way to potentially get some... Uh, Stuff in the graveyard temporarily for Muldrotha as well. Can get some lands from the graveyard onto the battlefield. It's definitely a reasonable card, it's a bit slow. Don't know if I can take it over a Scattering Surveyor, which is kind of the perfect uh, card to go with our Muldrotha, as it's a way to fix her mana. It's just a great card individually, and it also counts as an artifact to get back from the graveyard with Muldrotha. And then we can still play a creature alongside it. Rona could also be quite good. If we're going to try and fill our graveyard for Muldrotha, then Rona can also benefit from it. But uh, as I've said, if we are going to be base black-green, splashing blue, Rona is a little bit less exciting. But of course, if we take Rona, we could be base blue-black, splashing green. It's just that then our mana fixing might be a little bit worse. So, I think I'm just taking Surveyor. It's kind of the safest pick, because it doesn't commit us to any base colors yet. It's great with Muldrotha, it's great individually. So, let's not make it too complicated here. Alright, third pick. Bit of a weak pack, the best card here is probably like Fire Intervention. Nothing else that really excites me. We've got like a Gift of Growth as a, a trick, but if we're playing a Muldrotha deck, we don't want to have too many instants and sorceries that aren't removal spells. Ancient Animus is like okay with Muldrotha, I guess. It's legendary, so it puts a plus one plus one counter on it. And we might end up with a couple big creatures that can fight. It's definitely not an exciting removal spell, but if you're a green deck, sometimes it's the only thing you have. Don't think I'm taking a Cabal Paladin this early. I can usually get them later, and I guess we do have a couple cards that already play well with it. Surveyor and Muldrotha both trigger it to deal two damage, but uh, it's usually not a very exciting card. Could take a Slin Voda, I guess, but those usually also go pretty late. So if we want one, we can probably pick it up. If we ended up with enough ramp, and it's also triple blue, which might be a problem. Could also take the intervention on the off chance that we don't end up playing Muldrotha. That's also a possibility, although Muldrotha is pretty fun to build around, so it's kind of difficult to abandon it. I guess I'll take the intervention since I'm not going to miss out on an Ancient Animus and a Paladin anyway. We've got a Lanor Elves, which of course would be very useful at helping us ramp out uh, these expensive cards. We've got a Blink, as probably the best blue common in the set. And then we've got another Rona. So three potentially pretty good cards for our deck. The Elves fits in the deck pretty easily if we're going to be base green. Rona, we want to be kind of base blue-black to really take full advantage. But uh, we do already have a couple historic cards to go with it. Including Muldrotha, so Rona would not be bad. And then there's Blink, which is double blue if we want to kick it. So we have to be blue as one of our base colors, presumably, to get access to a nice bit of interaction. 
So we can kind of decide now if we want to be base green or if we want to focus a bit more on these two cards. I'm tempted to take the elf. That way we can maybe afford to take some more expensive cards, some more kicker cards. Let's try it. All right, couple options here. Fungal plots kind of wants to go alongside Moldrotha in the sense that if you're trying to fill your graveyard with cards like Dark Bargain, cards like the 5 mana Acolyte, they can both benefit from it. On the other hand, you don't really want to exile a ton of cards from your graveyard, otherwise your Moldrotha gets worse. But uh, Fungal Plots can still be an effective card. Also a big fan of Dark Bargain as a bit of card advantage. And filling the graveyards is also pretty useful. And then Mammoth Spider is also a serviceable card. Don't know if the Arcanist here is going to be great for us, since we're probably not going to have too many instants and sorceries. So probably don't need that one. Even a final parting, if we go deep enough, could be okay with Moldrotha, because it can find it and then maybe put something in the graveyard for it too. But it's definitely pretty slow, so I don't want to take it uh, right now. So between Plots, Bargain and Spider, I'm tempted to just take the the spider, just to make sure we have that uh, aerial defense set up. So we don't have to take the fungal plots that kind of goes against some of the synergies we want with Moldrotha. And we can maybe hope to pick up uh, some card advantage later. Might be a little bit early for the spider. But given our lack of removal, we might need some good defensive creatures here. Alright, now I'm probably not going to pass up on the blink. And by taking the spider, which uh, goes well with our Lenor Elves, as green being one of our base colors, we can maybe afford to go blue-green if we open a great card like Blink, and then maybe splash black instead of going black-green, splash blue. And I think Blink is uh, worth it here. Of course, Envoy could be a bit of mana fixing too, but it's pretty bad mana fixing. And uh, not a fan of the scout, typically speaking. Trickster double blue is a bit difficult to cast. Blink is a bit more flexible, since we can cast it for single blue if we have to. So let's take a Blink. Urza's Tome is interesting. Can also help us uh, fuel the graveyard in a way. And make use of extra historic cards in the graveyard. It's an artifact we can get back from the graveyard if it happens to be there. I think I'll try the Tome. Passed up on a lot of these uh, Arcanists so far. Arcane Flight is an enchantment, which uh, we should be able to get back as well from the graveyard. Although, if we don't end up with a couple Cold Water Snappers, I'm not really interested in it. Drudge Sentinel is pretty mediocre. Did pick up that Blink of an Eye, and if we are going to be base blue a little bit more, then the Arcanist could be fine. The Ooze is kind of medium as a 2-drop 2. So probably not going to play this intervention. Yeah, it's probably between like Arcanist and Arcane Flight if we're going to maybe try and go for the Snapper combo as one of our win conditions. Uh, Arcanist could end up being fine if we end up with more Blink of an Eye type effects. I'll take an Arcanist. Now I might take the Envoy just to have a filler creature over Befuddle and Unwind. Do we take another one, or do we take this final parting? It is double black, and we might end up base blue-green, in which case it's going to be difficult to cast in the first place. Might take another Envoy. Now maybe take the Paladin. Although I don't really intend to splash Cabal Paladin. Did we end up with more historic cards? We've got a Tome, Surveyor, Muldrotha, that's it. So it's actually not great. Scholar is kind of medium, but it is a wizard for potential wizard synergies. Could just take a filler befuddle too. Uh, Sage, I guess, if we can get Surveyor down plus Moldrotha, we can do some stuff. But that seems a bit ambitious, because Sage is pretty terrible if we don't also draw Surveyor and Moldrotha. What's more likely to make the cuts? Like, I already have these Envoys, so Scholar doesn't seem super necessary. Eh, maybe I'll need a Befuddle.
I got our final parting anyway, although I don't know if we'll play it. All right, so after the first pack, a bit light on interaction, just a blink of an eye. And uh, could use some more good uh, card types to go with the Muldrotha. Don't have any enchantments yet, for example. But uh, yeah, I've got a nice Lenor Elves. I've got, uh, of course, our Muldrotha. Surveyor is nice. Definitely need some help in the next pack. I've got a couple options. A lot of white cards in this one. Sheevan Fire, pretty good red card. We're looking at probably Dark Bargain and Acolyte. Acolyte can help us fill the graveyard. So does Dark Bargain. This is a bit of card advantage. This is also a creature we can get back from the graveyard with Muldrotha. So both are reasonable. Looking at the curve. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit all over the place right now. Could also take a second uh, Mammoth Spider if we want to stick to blue-green more closely and don't want to splash too many black cards since the fixing so far is a bit on the lower end. Green Memorial is also fine since we can sacrifice it, get it back with Muldrotha, although it's kind of slow. But yeah, if we get one later, I'll happily play it. Yeah, the problem is we don't have any soul salvages or other ways to get back Muldroth if we randomly mill it with Acolytes, so that's kind of painful if that happens. So maybe I do just stick to blue-green for now and just take a spider, which is always fine. And then maybe we'll wield a Dark Bargain or Acolytes. Well, now we definitely have to take this Eviscerate, I think. There's no amazing blue or green cards. Eviscerate's great removal. So, makes sense over Vicious Offering. Alright, that's a nice Sarah Angel. Mesa Unicorn, also a decent white card. Best card is probably the Deathbloom Thalad in our colors. Although it is a black card, so... Who knows, maybe we are... Black-green, splash-blue after all. This can make the blink a little worse, maybe not play a Befuddle and Arcanist. I think I still take the Thalad here. Got a deep freeze as removal or a candle. Both we can potentially get back with Muldroth. Of course, a candle is a bit more synergistic since it automatically ends up in the graveyard. And then there's also a thorn elemental as a fine curve topper. Already have two spiders, so probably don't need a third one. Um, it's probably between candle and elemental at this point. Yeah, it's probably the thorn elemental. We don't have much ramp, so hopefully we can pick up a little bit to. Speed up this elemental, I guess we've got one Lanor Elves. But uh, yeah, could use an extra finisher. Easy cast down. Would love me a Cloud Reader Sphinx too, but... I don't think I can pass up on some quality removal. So... We're looking more and more like Black Green Splash Blue. But I guess that's fine. We could mill ourselves with the Explorer to fill the graveyard. Or we could take another Mammoth Spider. I mean, I don't hate another Mammoth Spider. 3-5 is pretty good stats. Doesn't die to a Goblin Barrage or Kick Chieven Fire. It stops a lot of flyers in a set. It's definitely a more exciting card in this format than it was in, let's say, uh, Ravnica Legions. Nothing here. Don't think uh, we'll need the assistance. Both Fungal Infection and Syncopate are decent cards. Um, so this is where we kind of need to make up our mind on uh, what uh, the colors of this deck are. And Black-Green with a touch of blue probably makes more sense. Not sure yet on the final parting. But then Blink, we may or may not end up splashing. Of course, Need double blue for kicker, so we might just take the infection then. And did get a dark bargain on the wheel, so happily take that now. Uh, already have two envoys, probably don't need a third. Don't want to play Evangel. Phantom could be okay, we've got a couple historic cards. You never know.
Hopefully don't need to play that guy as protector. Alright, heading into the last pack. Did pick up some nice removal in the second one with the cast down and the eviscerate. Uh, could definitely use some good two drops, some more ramp maybe, or fixing. But uh, yeah, hopefully the last pack delivers. And yeah, I guess a Rona could be fine, even on the splash. Get back uh, some Scaring Surveyors, Muldrotha of course in a late game. Hopefully pick up one or two extra Historic cards. Hopefully the Candle Wheels to go with Rona. And Muldrotha as well. Ooh. Probably can't give up on this Verdant Force, a nice Curve Topper. Pretty pricey, so would be nice to pick up some ramp as well. Soul Salvage would also be a good one. Recycle some creatures from the graveyard. Nothing else really. Let's take a Verdant Force. Huh, Zahid might be a bit ambitious, but it is a powerful card. Yeah, we don't have that many artifacts to play this for three and a blue. Just a tome and a surveyor. It's potentially still possible if we focus on uh, some artifacts. But especially if we're gonna splash blue, we won't be able to reliably play it for double blue here. Otherwise, indeed, we could just take a divination, which on the splash is still maybe reasonable. Maybe if we wield that candle, it can help us ramp out Zahid. Divination would also be on the splash, so it's like a fine card, but definitely a lot less exciting than if we were blue as one of our primaries. Yeah, we'll try it. It is true that if we get Surveyor, it both gets blue mana and can tap for Zahid, so we can go turn 3 Surveyor, turn 4 Zahid if we have it, which is pretty exciting. And it is also historic for what it's worth. So we can get it back with uh, Arona. Well, there's no amazing black or green cards here, so I'm probably forced to take a blue card. Journey Mage vs Divination. I do have that one Scholar in the sideboard that we could play. There's a an Arcanist here that I could maybe play. That's also Wizards. But otherwise it's probably just a 5 mana creature. Could also take Impulse if we really wanted to stick to black-green. Maybe it's the more disciplined pick here. Um, don't really want Scouts. Could splash Deep Freeze. It's still a reasonable card late. Could always use a bit of extra removal. If our plan is to win with Zahid and... Thorn Elementals and Verdant Forces, then it's not too bad as a removal spell. Scouts could maybe be fine since we're a bit lacking in the two-drop departments, but it's just kind of a mediocre card. Don't have a ton of ways to find extra lands. I guess it's okay with Skittering Surveyor, and we do have a lot of expensive cards. So maybe Scout is still fine. There's a good chance we can get one later though. I'll take the deep freeze, hopefully we can get a scout later anyway. Alright, this is more like it. Skin which is great, can play it early and kick it late. Sapherd also would have been fine, but I'm gonna take the skin which over it. Howling Golem I might have considered playing as well, since it's an artifact we can get back. And it can help with Zahid. So it's actually close with Howling Golem, but given our lack of two drops, I probably gotta take the skin which. I guess there's a glider as an artifact, but not being able to block is a pretty big drawback when our deck is trying to get to the late game, but I'm probably not playing Evangel. So, who knows. Like the Crozen Druid here. Nothing here that I want. All right, got the Soul Salvage back, that's nice. Demonic Vigor, I guess is an enchantment we can get back with Muldrotha, but it's a pretty bad one. Don't know if we'll play the Gift of Growth, but you never know. More Envoys if we need them. I think we've got enough threes. Maybe we'll need a random two-drop. 
Alright. So our deck's definitely not perfect, missing quite a bit of the good mana fixing. A uh, bit light on artifacts for the Sahid. Didn't wield that candle, which would have been quite good with uh, Moldrotha and Rona and Zahid. But uh, let's try and make it work. So. Yeah, I don't think Glider makes the cuts. Final parting is probably a bit ambitious. And I can see cutting the Lingering Phantom pretty easily. So this is currently what we're looking at. Top end cards are definitely quite good. I've got the spiders to help against flying creatures. Not a ton of card advantage. Just like a Dark Bargain, Rona, Urza's Tome, and I guess Soul Salvage. Not much removal, cast down and eviscerate. And then a deep freeze on the splash. So we do have to be pretty conservative with our use of removal in this deck. This might be an 18 lander since our curve is pretty high. And we need to play three colors. So might need to make two cuts. Blink is double blue to be kicked. Which isn't great, but I think I'm playing it anyway since we could use a bit of extra interaction. And if we play some of these envoys we have a bit of additional fixing too. Yeah, 18 land seems pretty reasonable here. I've got the Urza's Tome to discard additional lands as well. Rona as an extra mana sink. Lots of cards costing is 6 or more. I could shave one spider pretty easily. And then need to make one more cut. Maybe just one Envoy. Even without an Envoy, we still have Thalid, Crozen Root, one Envoy and a Surveyor we can reliably play on turn 3. So that's still a decent amount. And then looking at our mana distribution. How many islands do we need? It's like 3 or 4. We have Surveyor that can fetch an island. We have Impulse that can hopefully help us with the mana fixing too a little bit. And then Envoy as a bad mana fixer. We have 5 blue cards. A couple of which I wouldn't mind playing early. And then a couple that are fine being played later. It's probably closer to 4 than 3, but I don't know if we can afford to play 4. How much green do I need? I do need a decent chunk of green and black. 8, 4, 7, Swamp, 3 Islands might be the split here. Because I need green early for the Elf, for the Impulse. And then we need triple green for Verdant Force too. Maybe 6 Swamps is still manageable. And then play an extra island. Like, no matter what we do here, the mana base is going to be a little sketchy. Alright. <laughs> nice opening hand. Yeah, probably can't keep this. Alright, this one's a bit better. But now we face a pretty difficult decision. I can't really bottom the Smuldrotha now, can I? So what about we bottom the Envoy, keep Impulse, which finds us black mana, so we can play the cast down so we don't die right away. And then we can eventually cast our Muldrotha. That's reasonable, right? Uh, probably keep the Skin Witch in hand for now. Yeah, our opening hand was a bit adventurous, to say the least. Alright. Not gonna cast that down. Ooh, Zahid. Alright, I've got a feeling that I'm probably gonna need to play this early. 
given all the six drops we have in hand. Probably won't have time to kick it. They might have a syncopate in hand, which is going to be pretty effective. Yeah, Truxus would definitely be a problem here, since cast down doesn't kill it. Voltaic Servant Beatdown. Could see Syncopate for one, in which case I could wait a turn. But if they Syncopate Spider, then they won't have it for the Muldrotha, so I think I can live with that. Alright, I see. It's pretty good. Probably cast this main phase in case they decide to somehow tap my land. Uh-oh. Yargle's in the house. That's kind of scary. Ooh, but we can play our Zahid now. Probably played it before Muldrotha. Yargle attacks. I guess I could block with Skin Witch 2 if they have a Fungal Infection. I could double block with the Spiders, I guess. But yeah, if I know for a fact they have Infection, I could also block Spider and Witch. And then we lose Witch plus Spider, but if they have nothing, then I lose Witch for free, whereas now I only lose one Spider. So I'll try this. Well, pretty happy they milled me with the Muldrotha in hand. Now we can get back Forest for free. So let's go to Combat. Don't necessarily want attack. That's fine. Voltaic Servant plus Icy Manipulator is pretty annoying. I don't think we need to try and race with a spider, since we're probably winning the late game. Could play Thorn Elemental instead of Muldrotha, since I can't get anything back with Muldrotha this turn anyway. I guess I could go Muldrotha and cast down, but there's nothing I need to cast down right now. And then probably keep Swamp in hand in case of a Skin Witch. Even though if I play this and then draw land, I could go Muldrotha into Rona. Or Thalad. So at this turn, it's probably Muldrotha plus maybe Cast Down. Uh, sign damage, no. Nope. 
All right, so we can cast... I guess Spider for now is fine. Ooh, slim Voda. But it's unkicked, so just uh, an 8-8 eight eight here. They don't get to tap anything with Icy this turn. Urza Stone's pretty good too here. I guess Saeed can still attack. And it might be worth it to just get in 7 damage with Thorn Elemental and then bind back with Muldrotha. Don't think we have any other good attacks. If I were to attack with everyone, what happens? They block Muldrotha with Slim Voda, block Spider, maybe Chump Spider, take 8 plus 5 is 13, but then next turn the situation looks pretty bad. Maybe if I had gotten back a creature right now with Muldrotha, then I could have made an all out attack, but we'll try this. Alright, put on chomping. Yes. And then we can replay Thorn Elemental. Keep land in hand to discard to the tomb. So my opponent had a lot of expensive cards in hand that they were maybe waiting to kick, Josu and Slim Voda, which is why they had so many cards in hand the entire time, but they were kind of forced to play them out early. But uh, yeah, Thorn Elemental with a uh, kind of super trample, if you will, can uh, ignore any blockers and just deal 7. And that plus Muldrotha is a pretty strong late game. All right, I guess uh, that works. Yeah, we had a pretty good opening hand there with the turn one elf. Ah, uh, maybe should have played Forest in case we find Lunar Elves. Although at this point I don't know if we really need Elf anymore. Spider versus Thorn Elemental. Facing blue-black, so they could have some flyers. Since we have Dark Bargain to find our other late game cards, so I don't necessarily need Thorn Elemental. Give us something to do early. Feels kind of bad to trade for the Thalids, but if they have an answer for Spider, I might end up taking too much damage otherwise, especially with the Dark Bargain as well. Alright. So this Rona is basically without value, since we don't have a Historic card in the graveyard. But if I take two to Dark Bargain and take another four, then we're going to be pretty far behind. And then... I could trade for the Thalids. Or I could just take three, play Spider. Because we have a Dark Bargain in hand, so we have more ways to find action. If we ever find Muldrotha and resolve it, we can get back Rona and all this other stuff in the graveyard. So maybe it's fine to trade here. Mm, 
If we didn't have a Dark Bargain in hand, it would be a different story. Alright, Saeed we can maybe cast soon. But yeah, Omnivore is pretty annoying. Has a threat of activation here with two Sapperlings in play. So I don't really get to block it. So for the time being it's basically a 3-3 unblockable. That one we can block at least. Top top. Play the forest so we have triple green in case we draw Verdant Force later and they make us discard here. So Omnivore can uh, potentially get plus six plus six. But of course we're happy if they sacrifice the Sphinx to an extent. If it's just plus four plus four it would be a seven seven which doesn't die to the double block here. So probably still gonna take it. Would love to find our cast down. And yeah, there's a skin witch. So probably forced to discard Zahid, sadly. And keep Dark Bargain to hopefully dig towards Muldrotha or maybe a cast down. If we can cast down the Omnivore, then the board is stable, and then if we find Muldrotha, we can take over the late game. Even Deep Freeze, I guess, would work. Alright, that'll do it. So if their last card is a counterspell or they top the counterspell, then not uh, doing this now could potentially come back to hurt me. But we could potentially block, force them to pump and then cast down, and then they would end up sacrificing an extra creature, which might be worth it here. How much does it matter that they lose an extra 1-1 token? Maybe not so much, unless they have an extra Omnivore. Or a way to get this one back with like a Soul Salvage, I guess. So maybe it's still worth it. I guess we'll just pass here. Can maybe block Dark Bargain and maybe they counter the Dark Bargain and then cast down. Alright, just another Sphinx, that's fine. So I'm not even forced to cast down here since I would be trading spider for omnivore essentially but then of course I have one fewer spider for the sphinx so let's dark bargain first to get a bit more info and see whether or not um, we're gonna need these spiders not the best uh, dark bargain yeah they might have a soul salvage which is why they're happy to make this trade Probably forced to cast down. We do get to shuffle that Thornal Mantle back into our deck. So what are we hoping to draw here? Moldrotha pretty much. We've got our own Soul Salvage. Couple removal spells. Verdant Force. Yep, there's their soul salvage. But skin witch is not too bad here. They might skin witch me first. Which uh, buys me more time to draw Muldrotha. They might also be playing around skin witch and holding some lands. Deep freeze we need to hold for the... Omnivore here. Alright, my own soul salvage. What can that get back? Zahid. And maybe Ron or Crozen Druid. And I can play Zahid right now too. It's probably worth it. And then between Rona and Crozen Druid, Rona can provide a bit of card advantage, which is nice. I'm at 12, so 10 life from Crozen Druid could also make the difference. 
Um, if I eventually find Muldrotha, I can still play the Crows and Druid or Rona, but Rona can help me find Muldrotha, so maybe that's the priority here. But then again, if I gain 10, that also buys me more time to draw Muldrotha, so it's kind of close here. Maybe I will play it safe. I guess I'll see two, four, six, eight. Yeah, this is a must block. Which I guess makes playing Zahid last turn a little awkward since now I, I can't jump with Surveyor. If I triple block what happens, I have 11 power to put in front. So that does make it difficult for them to actually kill everything. Yeah, I might just triple block here. And we'll see how much they want to sacrifice. They might have picked up like a blink of an eye, maybe. So now they've got two more sapperlings to sacrifice. Seven, seven. If they sack one more, it's 9-9. Nine, nine. If they sack skin, which 11-11, 11, 11, and then they can kill Spider and Sahid. What's going on here? Even if they make it a 9-9, nine, nine, they still can't kill both. I guess they didn't want Omnivore to die, makes sense. Alright, so what are we doing here? Five mana, I guess replay spider and then deep freeze omnivore. So omnivore has been neutralized. They did have to play blink unkicked there. Sadly, we lose our Crows and Druids. I should probably be playing out lands, because if we find Muldrotha, we can play a land out of the graveyard right away. And maybe then we can cast something else as well alongside it. Ooh, clutches my spider. Well, at least they don't have it for Muldrotha now. So do we need to find Muldrotha or... Something else soon here. Probably can't afford to block Skin Witch with the spider here. Alright, don't have many of those left. Let's see, 10, 11. Four lands in graveyards. 15, so three lands and 14 remaining. Ooh, wow. Eldest Reborn too. It's pretty brutal. So am I just dead now? Six, seven, eight. Yeah, we're just dead. Alright, GG's. Could have played it slightly differently in the final stretch there. Maybe before playing Zahi, just deep freeze the Omnivore so they can make that big attack and... Uh, end up killing Zahids, but I guess in the end that entire Omnivore turn they just killed one creature, so it wasn't all that bad. We made them play Blink Unkicked, so it didn't feel all that bad. Maybe they, they had the Skin Witch in hand already, which is why they were okay playing Blink Unkicked, hoping to maybe get some valuable cards out of our hand there. Not sure. Well, this hand's got potential. If we draw one of our two cheap artifacts, we can play a turn 3 Zahid, maybe. Um, if we draw a second blue source, we can maybe play turn 5 Zahid. If we draw anything to kind of bridge the gap between the early game and the late game, we're doing okay, so...
Hmm. Do we bolt the bird or cast down the elf? Don't think we do. It's a lot more relevant for constructed than limited. Especially when we only have two or three removal spells. Dark Bargain's a nice pickup. Don't have double blue, so this blink is a little unexciting. So maybe we just go for the land and the Verdant Force here. Opponents also, by the way, playing uh, Sultai, so <laughs> could be the Muldrotha Mirror. That one we might have to cast down, but maybe not right now. Opponent might also be keeping up a syncopate. Guess we'll find out. Can be cast down at least. Can be eviscerated. Hmm. What does this mean? I guess... Um they could have Vicious Offering giving minus 5, minus 5 if they sacrifice the Elf. Could be the plus 4, plus 4 kicker pump spell, which would be a lot worse if we block. So I'll probably take it. Yeah, a kicked Vicious Offering I wouldn't mind. But if it's the plus 4, plus 4, then blocking would be pretty bad, I think, when we have a cast down in hand, especially. Yeah, I mean, a 7-6 is pretty large here. Next turn I can play Verdant Force, which makes a string of chum blockers for it. But this might be the turn where I need to cast down the Worm, or cast down the Thalads, in case they go for the trick again. And then next turn play Thorn Elemental, although Thorn Elemental, if they give this plus 4, plus 4, can still eat the Thalads. They would just be hitting with the Worm, I would maybe take 7, so that's a lot. But then next turn we can start chumping. What happens if they give this plus 4, plus 4, 11? I guess I could double block the Primordial Worm. Play it a bit safe here since we've got Verdant Force. Alright, so this, this looks more and more like they have the plus 4 pump spell. So yeah, if we double block, this goes up to 11, 10. So it only kills one of my creatures. If they have kicked Vicious Offering, then they only kill one of my creatures still. And they just trade, that's fine. Alright, that explains it. They had Muldrotha in hand, so they were fine making the trade. Yeah, Muldrotha is going to be tough to beat since we can't cast it down. Finding our own Muldrotha, of course, pretty high up on our lists. This attack again, same attack they made with the Thalad a couple turns ago indicates maybe a pump spell. We'll just jump. I mean, if they can't answer Zahids, we could potentially just kill them in the air. Could also attack with force and then cast down the worm and maybe force them to jump. I guess if we cast down the worm, then if they want to replay worm, they can't replay the Thalad right away. But I'm not planning to attack next turn with the Verdant Force into the worm, we can just jump block the worm with the sapperlings. So, I think we hold it. Yep, 
Yeah, my opponent wouldn't take 7 there, they would definitely chump with the Thalidord Elves. Yeah, sadly can't Verdant Force block Muldrotha, because Cast Down can't kill Muldrotha, so we can't punish a pump spell here. And this would just be a trade. Alright, so they've got infinite chum blockers on the ground. So cast downing anything um, doesn't do much. But yeah, they still don't have an answer for Zahid, so hopefully that stays true. Soul Salvage is pretty good. I could cast it now and still cast down, but there's only a Thorn Elemental to get back. And next turn I do have the mana to Soul Salvage and to replay Thorn Elemental, so I'm probably better off holding it. Do we play the Swamp? Probably keep it in hand in case of Skin Witch or for the Urza Tome. I might have to cast down the uh, Spore Crown here. We'll see. Alright, so... Let's say they have the Kicker, putting two counters on every creature. Then we're still fine. So will block like this, see if they have a response. So probably just let damage happen. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright, that can gain them a bit of life. So they're not dead on board. They're playing with fire here, so now they can only sacrifice one sapperling. So do I cast down Omnivore now? They would basically be forced to also sack a Sapperling. Next turn they would be able to replay the Omnivore once again. But that's maybe fine. Because next turn I want to Soul Salvage, get back Thornal Mantle, play Thornal Mantle. Can even attack with Verdant Force now too, forcing them to chump. And Thornal Mantle by himself is lethal, so it's probably worth it to put an extra lethal threat in play. Get an extra sapling to chum block with. So we should be relatively safe. Although they probably still have a pump spell in hand, so if it is the plus four plus four and they get six damage unblocked, then I could die. Alright, it doesn't look to be the case. So plus four plus four were still fine. If they also attacked with this, they were still short here. Verdant Force definitely put in a ton of work this game, just providing chum blockers for the worm and Muldroth every turn cycle. So they're not dead on board to Sahid since they can sack another Sapperling, but they are dead to the Thorn Elemental. So do I just attack with Thorn Elemental then? Now eh, we're probably fine to still send Zahid too. In case I do have an answer for Thorn Elemental, we still kill them next turn maybe with Sahid. Alright, that's fine. So they did have the pump spell all along. 
So they're actually pretty close to killing me last turn since I only had three blockers. But yeah, Thorn Elemental just has super trample here, if you will. Yes, please. Alright, so no black mana. Once again, a nice sample hand here with only Force and Islands. I mean, this hand would be pretty solid with black mana. We have how many swamps? Was it seven or six? Probably six now since we added Island. So we're hoping to draw six swamps, Scattering Surveyor, Adventurous Impulse can maybe get there too. And we've got an Envoy which can maybe filter some black mana. So we're drawing towards like 9-ish black sources, but we're on the play, so we only have a couple draw steps to get there. Yeah, let's probably mulligan. This is better. Can probably afford to bottom a swamp since Impulse can find an extra land in most cases. So we've got all three of our colors, which is a start. Ooh, Merfolk Trickster. It's gonna start dealing some damage. Blue-white. Do have Spider, which can hopefully hold down some flyers. There's Muldrotha. Yeah, I mean, there is a world where we need to just eviscerate right now, so we don't fall too far behind if they answer Spider. We're taking quite a bit of damage in the meantime, but it does feel bad to eviscerate a 2-2. Probably gonna wait a turn. Alright, now I might want to play Envoy to trade for Trickster before we play Spider. In case they were holding up like a Syncopate or something else. So that didn't really change much. Spider time. Hopefully this holds, otherwise we're probably dead. Yep. Yeah, well the eviscerate in hindsight would have saved us somewhere around 6 to 8 damage. So probably would have uh, ended up being worth it, the way the game played out. In best of one, it's kind of difficult to know what to play around. If we were playing a sideboarded game, so we'd probably make a different decision. Alright, so chump and we're still dead. But then again, if we eviscerate the trickster, then we would not have had an answer for the dubbed creature, which uh, probably would have won them the game as well. Alright, pretty far from casting Zahid, but we can cast everything else. Yeah, blue tempo decks are pretty good against us since we have very few early plays to kind of trade off. So for our first play is a turn 5 Mammoth Spider and their hand is all Journey Mages, uh, we're gonna have a bad time. Probably hold Skin Witch. That's a magic card right there. Surveyor just unlocked uh, our full potential. Can play a turn for Zahid now. Still probably fine to play Zahid, or are we? 
Nah, probably got Eviscerate now, because if they do deal with Sahid, then we're taking a million damage from the third chapter. That's not too scary. Alright, decisions, decisions. Might be okay to play Spider first here, as strange as it sounds. Because let's say we play Zahid, they have a Blessed Light, we're taking four. If I play Spider and they Blessed Light, then I could still trade for Rat. But then I guess we lose our Artifact for Zahid. And then next turn we can play Kicked Skin Witch. And then on seven I can go Death Bloom plus Zahid maybe. Alright, so we don't really want to lose Surveyor. This could be like, I mean, Charge doesn't make a ton of sense. The Unbreakable trick, I don't really care about. Yeah, it could be a Giddens approach, but that's only 4 damage, so we would still trade. I mean, I could trade off Surveyor, but then we can't cast a heat, so I think we just block here and see what they have. Adamant Will, sure. And Fungal Infection. Okay, that makes more sense. Did draw Tome, which also lets us play Zahid for 4 mana. I could still Skin Witch them, because the 1-3 is actually a fine blocker here. It's probably still fine. Ooh, Eldest Reborn was their last card. Could have been pretty ugly. Now I don't mind trading off Surveyor, since we picked up the Urza's Tomb. And we get to make the play we described, turn 7, Deathbloom plus Sahid. I guess we'll tome now. Yeah, we probably wanted to keep that extra land in hand for tome. But as long as we have one land to discard, we're probably fine. I mean, I'm happy to trade off my Thalad at every point. Seems fine to me. If they have a charge, this still trades. And they still only kill one creature. We do have an 8 drop in the deck, so I probably want 8 lands in play. Alright, let's get in there. I guess we can maybe tome first. Ooh, Rona. Let's decline here, and then we can discard Elf, play Rona, getting back Surveyor, play Surveyor. All right, sweet. We beat the turn three history. They didn't have a great follow-up after the history, so... Sahid was able to finish the job. Ooh, nice. Always love seeing Surveyor in my opening hand. Yeah, looks good.
seems like a pretty grindy matchup, so I might want to save the Skin Witch for Kicker anyway. If we find a Zahid, we could play it next turn too. Alright, Raider hits pretty hard. You have to answer the spider, we're taking a beating. Take one of each, I guess. I could play 1 3 Skin Witch plus Envoy. What does that accomplish? Not a whole lot, because if they kill Envoy, I still don't have a good block on the Raider. It just means I can double block Thalad then. Seems underwhelming. If they do kill Spider, I'm probably chumping the Raider with the Surveyor. It's not too bad. And now we can Skin Witch them, down to one card. Yeah, the spider holds, we're in great shape. And we have a soul salvage to maybe get it back. And then impulse and tome can dig for our win conditions. Interesting. What does this mean? Gonna make him have it, I think. And then I could block with the skin witch, so if we draw Zahid we can play it. Alright, fish is offering, fair enough. Ooh, Verdant Force. Right now I don't have an answer for the Acolytes, so best draw here would be Zahid of Impulse. Moldrotha, pretty good too. And then I guess we'll play Moldrotha. Still gonna take damage from the Acolytes, but then next turn... I guess I won't have the mana to play Verdant Force necessarily. Are there any lands in the graveyard? I guess there is. So if I go Moldrotha next turn, I'm guaranteed a Verdant Force, so we'll be taking 6 from the Acolyte in the meantime. But then I guess we can also Spider next turn with Moldrotha, so that's still good. Jumping with Surveyor also counts as an artifact for Muldrotha, so yeah, if Muldrotha survives, we're in good shape. Soul Salvage could also get it back if they do answer it, just gotta make sure we don't die in the meantime. Main Phase Tome, that's a good sign. Alright, perfect. So we'll start with the lands. And then, yeah, I think we'll get our free... I could also kick Skin Witch to make him discard, but that doesn't answer the Acolytes. Uh, so I might just go Spider, keep up Cast Down. Seems like the safest play for now. Yeah, I think it's worth it to keep up Cast Down. I don't think we need to attack with Surveyor just to get that Muldrotha value. Doesn't seem worth it. Would also rather just keep it back as an extra chum blocker just in case. If they end up with two cards in hand, we can just skin witch them with Kicker out of the graveyard. They're looking what to exile maybe here. Any historic cards? No. Maybe they have a soul salvage that they want to keep. Discards a wizard's lightning. So they have some good ones in hand. No attacks. Don't think we need to cast down, or do we? Nah, we're fine. So now we can skin witch them. With kicker. Or 
land and ooh, Kazar off. So that's what they were trying to set up. Yeah, that would have been pretty effective since it doesn't die to cast down. They also get to exile it with the Urza's Tome for an extra draw. A kick Josu could have definitely killed us too. But a 4-5 mana is manageable. So let's see, you have enough mana for uh, Vern Force plus keep up cast down. At this point we would maybe want to keep lands in hand for Tome, but uh, keeping up cast down seems worthwhile. Also want to start attacking at some point, but it's much better if we can attack with a creature that's not Muldrotha, so if it does end up dying, we can just uh, replay it for free. Even though we do still have a soul salvage. So, we have most angles covered at 12 life. Not that to a kicked fight with fire, which is also important. And they're still pretty far away from casting one, even if they did have it. Technically could also cast down my Skin Witch replayed just to get cards out of their hands, but I don't think we'll be too interested in doing that. Yeah, we should maybe start attacking with the Skin Witch, because if they do block, then we're pretty happy. Alright, now it's time to start attacking. So... Force and Skin Witch get in there. Maybe a Surveyor should attack too, now that we have plenty of chum blocking sapperlings. Could technically draw into Zahid with a Tome, and then want to tap Surveyor. I'm pretty happy to just kill some of their creatures and replay Verdant Force. Don't feel the need to cast down anything. So probably kill Josu. Even though that does let them draw with uh, Urza's Tome. And now I might keep land in hand. And their own Skin Witch, sure. Can replay Tome from the graveyard. Now even Muldrotha gets to attack, I think. Yeah, maybe should have replayed land first before we attacked. But I'm pretty likely to cast down here just to kill their entire board. Alright. And next turn we should have them... Muldrotha plus Tome is also a pretty sweet combo, just by itself. Pretty sure they're dead on board if we attack with everyone, but... Muldrotha down. Right, sweet. Well, we got to see the full uh, range of Muldrotha in this game.
design could have been good with uh, a forest in it. We have eight forests in the deck, I believe, who are on the draw. Definitely a sketchy one. Get to play a Thalad and a Tome. Tome can loot away, green cards we can't cast. The Thalad definitely makes it uh, way more keepable than it would have been otherwise. I think I'm gonna try it. Opponent gets their elf, we don't. Turn to Ooze. Ooh, Song of Freilies. Yeah, that can hit pretty hard. Especially with all these early creatures. Can maybe cast down their next big play and then their board is still manageable. Alright, so it's not too bad here. Do want to cast down before it becomes indestructible, so I guess we might as well do it now. And then we'll be taking a little bit of damage. Probably should have attacked since we're not blocking here anyway. I guess I could technically have a haste creature that I want to block. Take five. Mending, all right. It's gonna get back to worm. Yeah, it's gonna be tough to beat here. Especially when we're missing green mana. Alright, there's a forest. Gives us some hope. So I can play the elf now as well. And what do we get rid of? Spider doesn't do a whole lot. But it is the first big creature I could cast. Because we might need a life gain from Druid. And Verdant Force is kind of how we need to win this game eventually. So can't really afford to get rid of it. At least the Thalad provides a chum blocker for the Worm as well, which is nice. So they get uh, no lands back, so they did not mill any lands with the Manning of Dominaria. Could trade here, because this would also still just trade, or we can hope to play this and then just chum block the worm forever. Yeah, given the Verdant Force in hand, I think we're okay with this trade. And then do we want to double block? If they have plus four, plus four, double blocking would still kill it at least. Same with Runamok. Kicked Gorger, another 7-7. Seven, seven. Surveyor finds green mana. So we're kind of doing it here. Can also activate Tome. Although there's not much that I would keep over Druid and Verdant Force. So we can jump with Surveyor, so we get a free draw with the Tome. It's probably worth it. Glider. Right. It's kind of the only real threatening card they have once we stick the Verdant Force. But Spider helps. Sahid also helps. Alright, so we've got a ton of options now. Can also play a 4 mana Sahid, but then I can play Spider alongside it. So probably just play Verdant Force first, take 2. 
Seven, I guess they could kill me with a kicked fight with fire, but that's gonna be good no matter what. I guess I could play kicked crows and druid first, and that would maybe save me from a fight with fire. And I think we get this going. I guess run amok if I chump block with the token could still kill me. Opponent doesn't even attack. I think now we'll cross and druid first. Seems a little safer. And then maybe keep land in hand for the tome. Should have enough mana to kick this. No attacks, and then we can try and win the game with Sahid. Alright, second Song of Freilis. Or maybe they shuffled this one back with the Mending and redrew it, makes more sense. Yeah, the third chapter is gonna hit pretty hard since then everything tramples, so can't simply chum block with our Sapperlings. So. Now it's kind of on us to try and kill them, or Muldrotha definitely helps. So I don't mind trading Verdant Force for Gorger now. Let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. One mana short of Muldrotha plus Jin. I guess we can Jin plus Spider. Alright, happy to make that trade. I guess now I could Muldrotha so that next turn I can get back something. Now let's just go Jin plus Spider, I think. Let's have the Tomb. And Muldrotha's not a bad last card to have. Ooh, kicked Bladewing. Alright. They're definitely putting up a fight. So can I afford to attack with Zahid now? It basically absorbs 5 damage from one of the flyers. So we're still taking uh, 8 damage from the other flyers. I guess, never mind, Spider can also block Glider, so we're just taking 5. So yeah, I'm thinking I want a suicide attack with Crows and Druid now. So that it ends up in the graveyard for Muldrotha. They might take it anyway, thinking we have a soul salvage. Alright, so let's Muldrotha and then... Uh, don't have enough mana to play the spider. So I could tome, discard land and replay the land for free. I guess I can start there. Hopefully we can hold here. If they get rid of Zahid, we're in a bit of trouble, but then I guess we can just get it back with Muldrotha. Maybe the Muldrotha block is not necessary. Just want to absorb some damage. Maybe just uh, toss in an extra sapperling. That way we're just taking five. Alright, Lightning kills Muldrotha. Do still have a Soul Salvage in the deck somewhere to get it back. And... Yeah, I mean... Maybe the Muldrotha block was not necessary. But I think we're still doing okay. So... Can Tome... I will not be exiling Muldrotha. 
and then we can deep freeze Varix or the token, what makes more sense. We do have bounce balls actually, we have a blink, so we probably want to deep freeze Varix. And no real great attacks. So we're just waiting for Soul Salvage or... Yeah, I guess Soul Salvage for the most part, since all our good cards are in the graveyard. So hopefully we'll find it soon. Eviscerates, also not bad. So now I could kill the Blade Wing and start attacking with Zahid, although... Yeah, I guess it works, because Spider blocks Glider. Of course, their glider can block, so they couldn't double block Saheed even if they wanted to. Skin Witch could be serviceable too here. Aha, and they were gonna try and ambush our Zahid. Skin which uh, saves Zahid. Yeah, I mean, if Soul Salvage is at the bottom, we could be in a bit of trouble if they answer Zahid. Uh-oh. Thorn Elemental, that's uh, it's pretty threatening here. We're at 11, so we're not dead to one attack. Rona can also get back Muldrotha, I forgot about this one, so we had two ways. Rona and Soul Salvage. I'm gonna play Rona, get back Muldrotha, play Muldrotha. Not much else we can do. Play Land of Muldrotha, I guess. And hope we don't die to Thorn Elemental. Uh, I could keep Zahid back for a turn, in case we fear removal on Spider, because then I guess we would still only be taking 10. I think I do want to attack with Zahid to pressure them, and to force them to jump with Spider next turn, maybe. They're jumping now. I'll go with the blue one. Alright, we could be dead to another gift of uh, growth here. Definitely gonna try and kill this Thorn Elemental with our blocks. The spider block too. Five, six, seven, eight. I mean, this is probably good enough, right? So opponent does assign to Super Trample, so we're at 4. They have enough mana to kick a fight with fire. They have an artifact they can sacrifice to a Goblin Barrage. It's just gonna be another spider. Alright, so... Is there any way I can replay my Crozen Druids? I don't have a way to kill it. Eviscerate and cast down are gone. I guess if I find Blink, I could maybe Blink it and then replay it. Three mana for Tome, two mana for Blink, five, six, seven. Doesn't leave enough mana to kick the Crozen Druid, sadly. What happens if we attack with everyone? So they've got four block, five blockers. So they take three plus another five is eight, exactly. So we could win with an all-out attack. 
all out attack is a little risky if they do have some interaction left. Because then we potentially leave ourselves exposed on the way back, but I think it's relatively safe to go for it. Three, four, five blockers. One, two, three, four, five getting blocked. Take three plus another five is eight. And then I guess we'll cast Vern Force. Could have maybe tomed first. Yeah, that was probably better in case we find Blink to remove an extra blocker. Alright, didn't have it. Because, yeah, even if they do have one piece of interaction, they probably still have to chump with most of their creatures, leaving them with maybe one attacker, which we can still survive. Alright, we're on the play. And we have a turn one elf. We have more black mana than blue mana in the deck. But uh, at the moment we can only cast Deep Freeze other than Elf. But if we draw Adventure Simples, Swamps, Scattering Surveyors, then we're in good shape. So, I think we'll try it. Alright, Impulse means maybe Black Mana. Perfect. Don't mind facing ooze. Two mana two twos aren't often playable in the sets unless you're like the hyper aggressive deck and can back it up with pump spells or maybe give them evasion with like a Pegasus. Because there's so many random one threes in the sets that a 2-2 doesn't often get to attack. Rona's not a bad draw. Could keep Rona in hand in case they answer Muldrotha, so we can get Muldrotha back from the graveyard. Uh, or we can just play it now, so next turn we can activate it, maybe get some card advantage. I guess we'll play Rona. And then just stay back with the Thalads. We're gonna win a long game with Muldrotha. We don't need to get in chip damage with the Thalads. Just play it safe. Although, yeah, now that they have blue mana, I don't feel like playing Muldrotha into a potential Syncopate, which would exile it, so we'll just kind of leverage this Rona for card advantage. So I'm probably passing. Hope they tap out. Alright, Spore Swarm, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think we use Rona, since there's not much I could find here that I want to cast. Still kind of want them to tap out before committing Muldrotha. I think I'm just going to pass once again. Not really in a hurry. Alright, Tome is a good one. It gives us something to do. And also fuels the graveyard for Muldrotha. Don't love the fact that we're giving my opponent so much time, because yeah, that's kind of what I was afraid of. Maybe they have something like Snapper plus uh, Arcane Flights, and they can kill us that way. But uh, at least now we have a window to play Muldrotha, knowing it will resolve. We'll keep up cast down just in case, since I want to play the uh, forest out of the graveyard. Alright, hopefully no arcane flights. I guess if we find spider we can just chum block every turn with Muldrotha getting back spider. Yep, there's the arcane flights, so yeah, this is kind of my worst nightmare.
So need to find spider, need to find crows and druid can gain a bit of life too. So now we want to get a bit more aggressive for sure. I guess I can tome first. Alright, there's spider. So I can discard land, play land. And then probably play spider, but we'll attack first with... Probably these two. So the plan now is to just chump turtle every turn. Ooh, wow, Gaia's blessing to shuffle the spider back so we can't replay it with Muldrotha, that's rude. Well, we do have two spiders in the deck, we can redraw. Opponent's also under a bit of pressure here from Muldrotha. Aha, uh -huh, they had black mana too. Dark Bargain can go digging. They do have potential counterspell mana up. Let the forest go to the graveyard and then replay it from the graveyard. And now what's... I guess play Thalad and Surveyor. Or I can play Thalad and activate Tome, which is maybe better. Could see a Vicious Offering end of turn, finishing off Muldrotha too. I think I tome to dig for an answer for this turtle. From the way they're playing, it seems very likely that they have a counter spell in hand. That one we can cast down at least. I think I'm better off toming and then casting down in my own turn. And then we can attack probably with everyone. Could maybe tome first. Infection can get rid of one blocker, but then they just chum Muldrotha. Deep Freeze still lets them block with the token, so it doesn't really kill them here. Uh, so I think we just send everyone... The surprise value might be better here. Especially if they're planning on chumping Muldrotha next turn with the token. And they're gonna chump now, so they're taking four... So now do I play Surveyor? I guess I do. Blink Muldrotha, sure. Alright, getting back Thorn Elemental is definitely a problem. But are they dead if they attack with the turtle? 
three, four, five, six. Yeah, if they just play Thorn Elemental here, I think they're dead. As we have exactly six. They're gonna go with Ooze, plus something else instead. Say so if I Infection... And they have a counter spell, they're pretty much forced to counter, otherwise they're dead. Um, which I guess is fine, because then I can maybe find an answer for the turtle. So yeah, they had the Syncopate as expected. Blink could also do it here. Now Blink does a lot of interesting things. I can Blink the Ooze and just attack for lethal, potentially. I could also Blink the Enchantment at instant speed to still block the Snapper. So there's a lot going on here. Opponent does only have two cards in hand, two mana, so there's not much they could have to interact. So very likely it's fine to just blink the ooze. I guess I could tome first. Alright, Spider gives us additional insurance in case a blink plan doesn't work. So I'm pretty happy to go for it now. I guess we'll blink without kicker, since otherwise I wouldn't be able to play Spider. Alright, GG's. Syncopate for one. We will pay for it. So yeah, at the start of the game I was very hesitant to play out Muldrotha. Because I suspected they had Syncopates in hand, turned out to be true. Could have maybe been more aggressive with the Deathbloom Thalad at the start to get in a bit more damage. To avoid the turtle scenario, which... Uh, Ended up being uh, the case, but uh, yeah, still very satisfying uh, draft run. First pick Muldrotha, built around Muldrotha, and it paid off since uh, most games we won was thanks to our legendary. Let's claim our prize. Alright, looks like we maybe... Finally unlocked all the rares in the set too for Dominaria. Probably still have a few missing mythics that we can hope to open. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.